so welcome back to the channel we are talking about my hair transplant today giving you a mini update i guess so if you remember in december i made a video about a bald spot that i had noticed on my scalp it was on this side of my hair which is my right hand side so you can't really see it now because of how i've parted my hair but basically I began to notice a bald spot in my recipient area last year so I thought maybe it was down to stress. I had been stressed for a number of months last year. It could have been down to me not keeping my recipient area moisturised and letting the scalp really like dry out and um, become pretty like flaky, itchy etc due to not washing my hair as I should, as regularly as I should. Um, and there were some other reasons I thought maybe it could be due to. I just wasn't entirely sure last year. I'm still not sure. And um, I mistakenly said in my one year post hair transplant update that my bald spot had gone. Because actually what I remember is that I had a bald spot both on my right hand side and on my left hand side. Now upon further analysis, the bald spot on my left hand side definitely seems to have either it's gone completely or it's reduced i.e the hair is growing back but the bald spot on my right hand side definitely is still there like it's quite difficult for me to even find sometimes it really depends on how i do these parts but um i have realized it definitely still is there and actually I've, i'm starting to notice like the center of my recipient area seems to be like balding or thinning however you want to describe it I don't want to cause any unnecessary alarm I don't want to exaggerate this but I will show you some footage just so you can see my recipient area the left hand side definitely seems to be okay and intact and how you would expect the scalp to look but I'm just feeling like the right hand side of my scalp looks a bit sparse in some areas even here i think it looks a tiny bit more sparse than perhaps like this part in here so i'm just starting to wonder like not is my hair falling out because actually i know my hair fell out a few months ago in february when i did my braids i stupidly braided my recipient area like usually I leave my recipient area out and just do flat twists like this but in February because I was approaching my one year mark I felt brave and I just yeah I braided my recipient area it was in big braids it was very loose so I didn't really feel like I was causing much tension but my hair did fall out stroke it did shed like shedding is normal we should all expect shedding but the amount of hairs that came out of my recipient area alone did cause me a lot of concern and I made a video at the time I can't remember what the video was about <laughs> but I'll link it on the screen um, I did mention that my hair shed a lot or it, a lot of strands came out I actually did film how many strands came out at the time but at the time of posting the video I couldn't find the footage I've now found it so I can show you like how many strands of hair came out just my recipient area alone and as you can see on the screen a lot of hair came out and some of the strands of hair did have the white bulb or like the follicle at the root so um, I'm quite scared that I inadvertently pulled out some of these transplanted hairs and that the hair isn't going to grow back because maybe I've ripped the follicle out now and maybe that's the reason why I'm experiencing some sparseness on my recipient area. I'm honestly not too sure, really not too sure because when I first noticed my bald spots, it was before I had braided this recipient area. That was in December of 2023. And at that point, I had not braided the recipient area or done anything to cause any kind of tension. It was only just perhaps the not keeping the scalp moisturized and like nourished is probably where I went wrong. But yeah, 
in a nutshell, I'm just not too sure what has caused these bald spots or thinning that I'm experiencing at the moment or like that I've been experiencing since December. I did reach out to Heather about it. So to be clear, I think there are multiple reasons why my recipient area now has some sparseness. Previous stress, the braids that I did causing shedding, allowing my scalp in my recipient area to get dry, flaky and itchy. I think there are multiple reasons why this is happening, not just one specific reason, but I could be wrong. Just as I was thinking about all the possible reasons why this may be happening, one of you left an interesting comment on my one year post hair transplant video that made me wonder whether not getting any PRP done following my transplant is also partly why I'm experiencing sparseness. Angela commented on my one year post hair transplant video about her own hair transplant journey. She said that she got her hair transplant done in August of 2020. Mind you, she got her hair transplant done at a different clinic, not Heather. And now she has thinning again and she hasn't worn tight hairstyles or to her knowledge done anything to contribute to the thinning. She's read online that transplants last one to five years and to have longevity, we need to do PRP treatments once every six months. She said that she started PRP and she's hoping and praying for her density to return. And then she advised that I do PRP like as a prevention. And then I did ask her for some additional information because again, I didn't get aftercare information from Heather. All I got was like the instructions of how to take your medication after the transplant. And then, you know, like don't wash your hair with hot water, use a bowl as opposed to a shower head, etc. It wasn't really like anything. I guess I I don't want to be confusing. I got aftercare information on the day of my hair transplant, but after that I didn't get any aftercare support. Um and there was once that I did WhatsApp them with some pictures, just I had some like white stuff on my scalp and I wasn't too sure if that was normal. They responded saying it was normal, don't worry about it. But apart from those two instances, I didn't really get aftercare support. So they didn't tell me at any point that one may need PRP, ongoing PRP following a hair transplant. That was like Angela's comment was new news to me. And as soon as I read her comment, I was like, okay because I can't remember what I mentioned in my one year post hair transplant video but I must have been talking perhaps about my bald spot um, and obviously out of the goodness of her heart she's just suggested PRP so now I'm thinking like is my scalp starting to thin because I'm already one year post and not that hair transplants aren't permanent because wherever you go on the internet it does say that hair transplants are permanent but I'm just starting to wonder, like, is the reason that I'm starting to experience a bit of like sparseness because I'm not doing the maintenance PRP? Really not too sure. So I'll read out what Heather said in a minute because I did WhatsApp them to ask them ask them about this. And then um I commented back on Angela's post just to understand a bit more, like, did she do anything to contribute to her thinning? now that she's a few years after her hair transplant and she said no so she basically said that her recipient area fell out after four years so again please do prp to maintain your hairline she said that we need to do it once or twice a year to maintain our hair and that she wishes that someone told her about this because she doesn't want another hair transplant but she may end up having to get one now and then she said she never got her hair done professionally because I was asking Angela, like, what do you think has contributed to this? And she said that she never got her hair done professionally. She always did her hair herself. She wore headband wigs, jumbo twists and flat twists with her raw hair. 
she mentioned that she's on some birth control and she's got some thyroid issues I have thyroid issues as well she said that when she did crochet hairstyles she always left her edges out and she slicks them down with gel and she got her hair transplant done by natural hair transplant her surgeon told her that PRP was optional she was never told that her hair may recede over time she feels that she did everything correctly And then she took some pictures and realized the density of her hair had decreased dramatically. She did some research and she saw over time people get a second transplant because their density decreases as well. The only treatment that seems to help people maintain their hair is injecting their plasma directly into the grafts once or twice a year for maintenance. Her scalp isn't bald, but the density has decreased dramatically. So she did PRP in April, she says. She just basically doesn't want to get another hair transplant done because of the pain. Like me, I don't want to get another hair transplant done or even have to get PRP injections done because I'm just so scared of the pain. (laughs) I don't know why. I feel like I'm even more scared of the pain now that I've had the hair transplant done as opposed to before I even had this procedure done. I'm like so fearful of potentially getting PRP injections, even though I know what the pain is like because I've had a hair transplant before. But yeah, I'm just, I want to avoid having to get PRP injections. But I'm just thinking, now that I'm starting to experience some density issues, should I be getting PRP injections, basically? So um, she just basically is trying to tell people that we should be getting PRP once or twice a year so that in four years' time, we don't end up experiencing what she's experiencing. And she wishes someone told her that, I guess, the transplant isn't 100% permanent. So, yeah, we just had a few, like, back and forth comments, I guess. And she mentioned that there are some other YouTubers who got their hair hair transplants done many years back, such as Destiny Godly, Jasmine Rose, and Metayana. I know who she's talking about. And, yeah, many of them have chosen to get second hair transplants done because they weren't happy with their density. So, yeah, she's just basically saying hair transplants aren't 100% permanent and that we need to be getting maintenance PRP once or twice a year just to ensure that the density doesn't go away. I did do some research on this because this was very startling to to come across. Honestly, I hadn't came across this in any of the research that I was doing prior to getting my hair transplant, and I hadn't come across it even after my hair transplant when I was still doing lots of research or maybe I did but I ignored it and forgot that I even read that stuff because I was adamant that I didn't want to be doing or paying for anything else after getting my hair transplant done who knows and then lo and behold I did find some information about the necessity of PRP maintenance and I just felt like oh it's so typical that it's only when you're searching specifically for something do you come across that information? But all the times where you were just doing generic research, this information didn't seem to be available. So yeah, I have found some sites on the internet that do say that maintenance PRP is required. This site says that it is generally recommended to do a course of four treatments, initially one per month after your hair transplant. And then after that, it's recommended to carry out maintenance and preservation treatments every three to six months. Another post on the same website says that research indicates that addition of PRP improves follicle viability during and after hair transplant, enhances post-transplant tissue healing and promotes hair growth in transplanted hair follicles. It also mentions somewhere else on that page that they recommend maintenance and preservation PRP. The Treatment Rooms London website says that initially PRP treatments can be every three months before moving to every six months to maintain your regrowth. Longevita says that you can have a PRP injection on the day of your transplant and then your last one no longer than 12 months after your surgery and then after your one year mark they recommend that you get maintenance injections once a year to keep your hair strong 
And then there are a few other sites I came across as well. Um, Real Self says that they recommend continuing BRP treatment even after a hair transplant to promote collagen in that area, to strengthen and thicken the hair that has been transplanted. It talks about hair growth cycles, which I spoke about in one of my previous videos. And then on Quora as well, I found a chat and that was speaking about PRP after hair transplants as well. That says the frequency of PRP treatments after a hair transplant can vary depending on the individual and you need advice from your surgeon. However, a general guideline is right after your hair transplant, start your PRP and then you can move to having it done once a month for the next three months. And then after that initial stage, they recommend doing it every three to six months as ongoing support for your hair density and for hair growth. I just wasn't really too happy to find this information out because like ongoing PRP is a lot of money and also the pain. Like I've watched some videos of people getting PRP done and it looks just as painful as when you get your numbing injections when you're getting a hair transplant so I'm just really trying to avoid doing PRP but I'm I feel like there's not a way out of this it kind of feels like it's going to be inevitable especially since I'm starting to experience some density issues which is not ideal let me just read to you what Heather said when I reached out to them about my PRP one of their I don't know if this is a technician or a surgeon, but he said that he recommends PRP done twice a year for maintenance. He just mentioned that it's supportive and that it's like generic advice. So yeah, I also reached out to, I think it was their aftercare number, just to understand what their advice was. They said you can have PRP every month. In addition, you should stay away from unhealthy foods. You should exercise, take biotin and iron supplements to support hair growth. And then they mentioned using rosemary oil and a derma, ro derma roller as well. And then they said you don't have to get PRP. It's not like necessary, but it's good to get it done. And they said it could be every six months. So it definitely seems like PRP is advised, if not mandatory after a hair transplant. I just felt a little bit annoyed that I wasn't told this and that I'm only finding it out now. I did also ask Heather as well, what is the likelihood of our recipient area thinning out over time if we don't get the maintenance PRP every year? And they couldn't say, they said it was very difficult to give a percentage, but they just advised that people have PRP done. So yeah, that's basically where I'm at right now. I've got to consider if I am going to go ahead and get ongoing PRP. It definitely feels like I'm going to need it or like I do need it because I'm experiencing some issues with my recipient area um what Heather did say in case you're interested they are going to send me a few of the products that they give you guys after you get your hair transplant done because again I had my transplant done over a year the aftercare products that they gave me are different to the products that I've seen many of you have after your transplant so they're going to give me um a few of those products to use to see if those help so I definitely will use them and come back online and just share if I've seen any difference. But yeah, it looks like some intervention action is needed. I just need to decide what and when. So this is in the spirit of me keeping you updated about hair transplants because I know so many of us, we're doing so much research before we get this done and you want to know if this is permanent how long did the results last what you need to do to ensure that you have a successful experience etc and um yeah I just want to help 
in any way that I can what I would say is even if you're a year post your hair transplant or 18 months post you know the time where they say you should see the full results don't risk it by braiding your recipient area although I noticed my bald spot before I braided this area I would still say don't do anything to risk the success of your hair transplant even if you're a year post or two years post or five years post I don't think I'm going to be braiding this area again because it just seems like the hair is potentially fragile or I just need to be extra careful like I don't want to have to get a second hair transplant done so I shouldn't have braided this area at all and I really should have been keeping my scalp moisturized it was kind of like due to not paying attention that I just let my scalp dry out I wasn't like oiling it regularly and the scalp was yeah it was really dry and I I kind of do feel like it was that that is the culprit my dry scalp and potentially stress as well I believe those were the culprits of my bald spot appearing initially and um it being a bit sparse in the center I'm not too sure what the reason is but um yeah I'm just really praying that things get better and that if I do decide to get PRP that it helps and that it brings back the hair so um I do hope this was helpful let me know if you've got any questions at all I will of course continue to keep you updated on this hair transplant journey the ups and the downs yeah yeah <laughs> don't really know how to end this video but I just hope you appreciate me continuing to give you these updates and just being very transparent about my hair even when I don't really feel like it's going a hundred percent well so subscribe to the channel for more updates on this hair transplant journey of course comment down below if you've got any questions like the video if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one take care